Hello, World Wide Web. I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair, and it's time to review the next Star Wars movie in the order they came out in. That's right, the Star Wars Holiday Special. A made-for-TV movie aired one year after the original film released in theaters. The Holiday Special was then never aired again, never released officially, and legends speak of attempts made to completely destroy any trace of its existence, which obviously didn't work. Though one question still remains. Was this George Lucas's fault? Well, it was produced by 20th Century Fox for CBS, and they say that he had absolutely no input whatsoever on how that went, so... I mean, except for the other sources that say that the entire focus was his brainchild and he absolutely refused to be talked out of it. But, you know, it's not like he knew how the filming was going. It's not like it was on set or anything. Although there's other sources that say that he actually got daily updates and he okayed it the whole way through. And then there's the other guys that say he and Cooper faked the moon landing, but, you know. In any case, the Star Wars Holiday Special is about Chewbacca's family on the planet Kazook getting ready to celebrate Life Day. But, oh no, Chewie hasn't shown up yet. Imperial activity has been on the rise, and they're worried he might not make it. Not enough plot for 90 minutes? Don't worry, a bunch of disjointed random shit happens as well. And holy hell is it random, but... Never mind all the build-up. Let's take a look at the Star Wars Holiday Special and see if... You maybe it actually is a little more connected than anyone realized over the course of 40 years. The movie opens to recycled special effects and obviously far lower budget shots of the new story. That's it, I'm turning back. <laughs> Ford, jeez, you, you gotta give it a little more of a chance than that. Chewbacca, still played by Peter Mayhew, points out that we need to keep watching because he's gotta get home for life day. Thus, we recycle footage of the jump to light speed, bringing them not to Alderaan, but the opening credits. The Star Wars Holiday Special, starring Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. Well, at least I don't have to rattle off all the actor names. I had no idea I could just play this out. R2-D2 as R2-D2. Or not. Kenny Baker there. So I'll get to them when they come up. Let's move on to the start of the events on the Wookiee home planet of Kazook. Or a painting of it, anyway, where the populace lives in funky sci-fi treehouses, very impressive on the outside, but on the inside it looks like your average sitcom set. Like, home improvement, but hairier. As we see Chewie's father, Itchy, played by Paul Gale, and Chewie's son, Lumpy, played by Patty Maloney. <laughs> don't speak English, or have subtitles at all for the Wookiees. And it's not just one little section. No matter how large some segments of it can go on for, it's a constant theme throughout the entire movie. Also, the aproned Wookiee is Chewbacca's wife, Mala, played by Mickey Morton, who I can only assume he married because all the other girls on Wookiee High School were named bitchy or stinky or some other crazy shit. Though despite the lack of a coherent language, you can still understand what they're saying. <laughs> So they show Mala is one hell of a homemaker by the fact that she is almost always decked out in an apron. Though, personally, considering she spends most of the running time preparing food, I'd much rather have seen her in one hell of a hairnet. So the movie concentrates on establishing a few key points in the setting first and foremost. That being that Chewbacca's family lives in a treehouse, of course, but holy fuck is it high off the ground. Also, Lumpy is fucking insane. Most importantly of all, though. Mala is distraught because she doesn't know where her husband Chewie has been. All she has right now is a picture of him on the mantle. She didn't even get the action figure for company. Of course, we can't just have them stand around waiting for Chewie all movie. I, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what they do, but fuck it, this is a variety show, and Itchy knows just what variety we need. So he gets Lumpy, a cassette, and then... <laughs> We get holographic dancers to distract us for a few minutes. Seriously, that, that, that is the extent of what happens here. I do get to wonder just why the show is so tiny, considering the holographic toonsmith is able to become life-size and stand to the side of the table, but then again, all he does is point out more shit is going on with the table. You know, the hollow chest scene in the original is actually supposed to be done with actors 
actors instead of stop motion, but they decided to go with stop motion instead because the suits looked a little too hokey. Of course, if I start complaining about the special effects in this looking hokey, then I'm really missing the forest for the trees here. After two and a half minutes of dancing, circus acts, and tuba make tube butt, the show finally ends, and we can get on with the show. Just a reminder, Chewbacca still isn't anywhere near here, but that's okay. He's not the only one they dragged on set to be in this thing. Or to look. It's Chewbacca's family. <laughs> Mark Hamill's here as well, as well as Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher, and as far as I can tell, absolutely all of them made it to be in the Star Wars Holiday Special due to contractual obligations. The role of Luke is pretty much wasted here, as all he does is say, no, I haven't seen Chewbacca, but hey, it's life day. He'll be there. And then R2-D2 just gets fucking crazy here. We get it, R2, you vape. Nevertheless, Mala's search for answers doesn't end here, so she connects to Trading Post Wookiee Planet C, or some shit, and we see an exchange between an Imperial officer and the shopkeeper, Sondon, played by Art Carney, trying to pitch Nintendo's latest innovation, portable fish tanks. And you can take it with you anyway. And the tank is a snap to clean. I hate fish. I well, so do I, as a matter of fact. I take a drink once in a while, but... As you know, speaking of drinks, maybe you could try this Wookiee Sweat Elixir we just got in. <laughs> Don't let the name throw it. It's actually made from Bantha excretions, but it'll cure your back pain, your front pain, your wrist pain, and a pain in the ass for you. This bit is interrupted by what started it in the first place, Mala calling up the shopkeep for any word on Chewbacca. He can't really talk with the Imperials around, so he tells Chewie's on his way in code. She did it all by herself. In fact, you might say she did it by hand. Solo. <laughs> That's a great cipher, man. No way they could possibly tell what the hell you're talking about there. Oh, I have to go now, Mala. I'm so tired of been working all day that I could just stab an Imperial troop in the eye with a letter opener. Keeping Chewbacca's location away from the Imperials is going to prove to be a bit of a challenge because Darth Vader has gone Saturday morning cartoon on the Rebels. I want the Rebels located and identified. If it means searching every household in the system. <laughs> Jesus, I'm at the point where our ticket starts more seriously if it delivers lines like Skeletor! With Vader on the move and Chewie's family in trouble, it's time to ignore that looming threat of horrible death at best, constant torture and incarceration at worst, and just watch a cooking show starring Chef Gormanda, played by Harvey Korman. Stir, 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 stir. Very nice. Now, step two, while we're stirring, we also whip. Mm. So it's stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir. And, honestly, this is one of the movie's up numbers. And it's not like it's a great feat of entertainment to accomplish that, but it's at least okay to watch at some points. Mainly because Harvey Corman gets insanely into the role as the TV chef. Come on, faster all together now. Cooking can be fun. Stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir. Stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir. Wah! Fucking hell, it's working me up so much. I want to make some Bantha Chunk Stew myself. Step three. We also have to beat. So, it's beat, 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 stir, whip, stir, whip, beat, beat, stir. Okay, okay, that might make pulling off the recipe a tad more difficult. I don't have a third arm to use as a beating implement. I suppose I could use my usual beating implement. After just under five minutes of this, Mala just turns the TV off in the middle of the instructions because she's done, I guess. Unfortunately, Han Solo isn't done trying to take Chewie home because, oh no, he jumped into the middle of an Imperial fleet! Why do I always think that taking you home for life day is gonna be easy? Dude, escort missions are always a pain in the ass. Just be glad that Chewie actually stays in his seat instead of randomly opening the airlock or glitching through the floor. To make matters worse, the Empire has just decided to quarantine the planets, restricting all ships from landing or taking off. This just before there's a terrifying knock on the door. It's me, Sondan! <laughs> <laughs> And yes, the shopkeep is a more important character than pretty much everyone outside of Mala, Itchy, and Lumpy. He's here to deliver some packages. Each and every one will be useful later, but as such, there's no reason to explain what the hell any of them are. Well, except for one, I guess. Something especially for Itchy. Oh, it's a real... it's kind of hard to explain. It's a, uh... Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wait. They, 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 they don't mean... Oh, yes. I can feel my creation. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I'm getting your message. Are you getting mine? This fuck fucking thing have the fucking fuck some of this fucking movie? We are excited, aren't we? Well, just relax. Just relax. Yeah. Relax? You're trying to be Wookiee Rodica. Something tells me they like a little rougher than that. 
You see, I am your fantasy. I am your experience. I am so experience me. Okay, fine. How long is this scene anyway? This is our moment together in time. That we might turn this moment into an eternity. Alright then, fast forwarding. This is Diane Carroll, who sings a song about the fleeting state of love and time, going over how this is only one minute, and she won't shut up and stop singing for the next four minutes. What's the best way to wash down awkward pseudo-pornography? Why, with a cameo appearance of Princess Leia and C-3PO, the latter still played by Anthony Daniels. She says it may be a happy life day for you, but personally, she's seen happier ones. But to be fair, it is hard to top last year's life day. I mean, how often do you get to see a swimming pool full of baby oil and Twi'leks? As with the last cameo, Leia learns that Chewie hasn't come home yet, but can't do shit about it, and just assumes it'll be okay. In the meantime, Chewie's almost home! Except, of course, with a problem with that Imperial blockade enforcing the quarantine. Better land on the north side, it'll be safer there. <coughs> so it's a long walk. <coughs> it's fine, Chewie. Crossing a hemisphere isn't a problem. We can do it in a fade-out. As such, Chewbacca's family becomes excited when they hear a ship overhead and a knock at the door. Surely that must be Chewie come home for life day at last! Or another friendly reminder to install a goddamn peephole already. <laughs> yep, the Imperials have stopped by to look for Chewie, or any sign that this household of Wookiees has any ties to the Rebel Alliance. So they're just searching the house in an awkward, tense fashion. Nothing too much to do here, but wait out the movie's running time. Will you get on with it? Alright, uh, alright. Well, you know all those little doohickeys the shopkeeper brought? Well, they're suddenly plot-relevant in one way or another. Such as this thingamajig, which it seems has no purpose outside of providing a holographic performance by the Jefferson Starship, which, considering how much music we've already had, isn't too random and isn't bad. I still shoehorned in like crazy with next to no explanation, but I mean, at this point, what do you expect? With that out of the way, Sondon has no reason to be there anymore, and the Imperials dismiss him. Oh, don't forget about these protective cases for your identification, God. I got a good item. That's it. I'm gone. And with him finally out of the way, we can actually get to the best part of the entire fucking special. Still introduced in a convoluted, ridiculous way, while the Imperials tear up Lumpy's room looking for any rebel ties, like the kid just so happens to be some kind of hardened criminal, he pops a cartoon into his PlayStation Force, and what would it happen to be? Why, a rebel sympathizing story about motherfucking Chewbacca, Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Dr. Robotnik, and all these motherfuckers. I can't understand what Chewbacca's doing. Whatever he's doing, there must be a reason. <laughs> you obviously have no idea what special you're in, honey. As Chewie's strung hung up by his ankles and fled to a planet with, uh, like, jello pudding oceans? Uh, Luke follows with R2-D2 and C-3PO in tow. However, when they arrive, they find a totally new face in the Star Wars saga. What is it, Mr. Luke? I'm not sure. Boba motherfucking fat in his first ever appearance. And, you know, honestly, in my opinion, I think his appearance here is actually better than it was in Empire Strikes Back. For one thing, he's got a lot of lines giving more than a few clues to the kind of personality he has. All they do is eat. This is all we have, but uh, he's welcome to it. You are foolish to waste your kindness on this dumb creature. I mean, he doesn't come out and say, I'm here to deceive you for my own personal gain. But, you know, you do kind of get that impression, even if you don't already know who the hell Boba Fett is. It's subtle enough, though, that he can still say, Oh, you're fighting the Empire? What a small galaxy! Me too! And join Luke on his quest to locate Chewbacca. Upon doing so, though, Luke suddenly faints, and we learn that the talisman thing... Uh, yeah, that there was a talisman at some point. Uh, well, it has a disease it carries with it that causes humans to fall into a deep sleep, and they can only be kept alive by hanging them upside down as to keep the blood flowing into their brain. Now it's just Chewie, Boba, and the droids who have to solve this crisis. Fett mentions that there is an antidote he can get in town, but he must go alone. I have made contact with the Rebels, and all is proceeding as you wish, Darth Vader. Oh boy, kids, it looks like Boba Fett's been working for Darth Vader all along. Now, before you can get too upset about this, please let's change the scene to this fucking Ottoman screaming about it. 
After that commercial break made even more unnecessarily out of place is over with, we return to find out that the droids accidentally trip over the very frequency that Boba Fett was using to talk with Vader, learning his true intentions. Of course, Luke and Han were unconscious for all that, so their reaction to being cured is a bit different. Boba, you're a hero and a faithful friend. You must come back with us. What's the matter with R2? Well, IOV animation is all over the place, so someone replaced his metallic frame with rubber bands and overcooked squid. If you're expecting a big climax, well, uh, no. C-3PO explains the situation, and then Boba Fett just leaves. The end. Now it's back to the considerably lower quality live action bits. The Imperials found no evidence that Lumpy was in fact a rebel spy, and he's allowed back in his room to cry about how they ripped all his toys apart. Oh well, there's still that one he hasn't built yet, and it even comes with an instructional video! But now, let's get started, shall we? Which is kind of like a YouTube poop, except without any of the creativity or familiarity of being a meme. As Lumpy struggles through the instructional video, the Imperials are informed that they have to struggle through something else. Seriously, it's a command from on high that they have to watch this shit. It is required viewing for all members of the Imperial forces. And what, pray tell, has the Empire chosen to reinforce its values and loyalty from its soldiers? A goddamn song and dance number in a canteen with B. Arthur, where the song of the day is an ode to Last Call. Last call caused by an Imperial declared curfew, but who's counting? It's a damn long segment, too, for being so disconnected from everything. It's amazing how much you can sing about sending people home. Along with her bouncer, it looks like she's renting from the Wicked Witch of the West. So say goodnight, Fred. <laughs> good night, but not goodbye. On the plus side, it does mean that the special's almost over. I mean, dear God, there's so many parts, it's just pointless. I, I get to just skip over it for the review, but it's still really hard to sit through. After the song ends, the transmission is interrupted yet again with a call for all Imperial soldiers to return to base at once. Despite this clear order, however, it's decided that one stormtrooper should stick around, you know, just in case the father Wookiee comes home and said Wookiee is a rebel Wookiee, and they should Wookiee him the fuck up. However, what he finds instead... Return to base. Return to base. Return to base. One stormtrooper. Three Wookiees. How do they not just beat the ever-loving fuck out of him? I, I realize one's a kid and the other's really old, but I mean, come on. We all know that Lumpy could just rip his fucking leg off and beat him with it. He doesn't have to, though. All Lumpy's got to do is avoid the guy for a little bit, and wouldn't you know it, his daddy, Chewbacca, has come home. Not that he's really important here, so he just gets in position, so the real hero, Han Solo, can move in. Movie, you weren't high enough quality to justify a Wilhelm scream, and you know it. Never mind that, the point is Chewie is finally home. Yeah, he just spent most of the movie walking here, along with Han, but don't let questions of how he can walk a thousand plus miles in 80 minutes bother you. That's not the point of life day. You're like family to me. Big, hairy, constantly screaming, and willing to rip me in half at a moment's notice. God, I had a fucked up childhood. Point is, happy ending! Chewbacca has come home for Life Day, and it's just in time. Now we get to see what the hell the Wookiees do on Life Day. They get out their big balls of light and shit, and wear red robes, looking like they're trying to cosplay as Palpatine's red guard, but couldn't afford the helmets. Oh, well, that's not the point. They all gather their glowy balls of life stuff around the Tree of Life, where we meet back up with Carrie Fisher, who plays us out with a final song. We celebrate a day of peace, a day of harmony. Oh, I'm sure that makes a stormtrooper you kicked off your treehouse to his death feel much better. Hey, it's, it's okay, sir. It's okay. You peacefully broke your everything. Anyway, that was the Star Wars Holiday Special. Holy Fuck shits. Yeah, everyone knows this is bad. It's common knowledge by now, but how bad is still quite a sight to behold. There's so much about it that it's just hard to watch. Seriously, sitting through this is a challenge. It's little wonder various legends about it exist to this day, like Carrie Fisher putting it on during house parties when she wanted her guests to go home. I'll admit, even I had to stop and walk away for a while at one point because I felt like I was going insane. Yeah, it was the part where we watched Itchy watching VR porn that did that. There are enjoyable points, of course. 
very, very few of them, but they do exist. It's not enough to make one feel like this thing was worth watching for anyone other than the most die-hard Star Wars fans, though. The best part of the special is said to be the cartoon in the middle of it, and I do agree there. I wouldn't go so far as to say the cartoon was particularly good in its own right, but compared to the shit surrounding it, it at least felt like some level of skill went into the production. Other than that, the whole thing was one disaster after another. Yes, variety shows don't necessarily need a strong narrative thread to go from one bit to the next, but the bits themselves need to hold up and be somewhat entertaining. I can think of a few gags I got a chuckle out of, but like I said, this was very difficult to sit through. Overall, the Star Wars Holiday Special is bad. It's terrible. It's an abomination that I have a hard time believing anyone outside of Star Wars media-consuming completionists would feel any satisfaction from tracking down to watch. Yeah, a couple parts are better than others, but not nearly enough for me to feel comfortable giving this any more than one badass Bantha Baroth beating out of five. I mean, it's on YouTube in its entirety, last I checked, if you want to you know, seek it out, but I mean, don't say I didn't warn you. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow, and remember, Episode 1 is actually not the worst Star Wars movie. They, they admit it exists. Oh, don't forget about these protective cases for your identification, God. I got a good item. That's it. I'm gone.